Any word? No, no, not yet. Thanks. She's been in that delivery room a long time. Yeah, I'd say, um, ten minutes at least. Is that all? You know, I've seen fathers less nervous than this. <sighs> Can't help it. A man who takes becoming an uncle seriously. Hey, this is my first shot at it. Oh, please. Going to do just fine. Imagine, Brooke's gonna be a mom. <laughs> yeah. The baby's going to have a very interesting life. Mm hmm. Certainly, with Eric and Brooke as parents. And all those fascinating relatives. Yeah. I guess there's no getting around that. Getting around what? Ridge is gonna be a relative as well. Yes, yeah, he is. He could ruin things for Brooke. You know, Storm, there's really no way of preventing that, not uh, without interfering where you shouldn't. Maybe. But the fact of the matter is, he's a threat to their relationship as long as he's even in the picture. You don't believe he's that attached to her, do you? Taylor, he's always around. Hell, he's even here at the hospital. He claims it's friendship. I can see, and anyone else Mr. can see it's... Hawking? Yes, ma'am. I have some good news. This is it. Well, let's hear it. You have a beautiful nephew. Seven pounds, 11 ounces. A boy! Oh, All right. my goodness! <laughs> Oh, I've contacted uh, Mr. Forrester. Uh, okay, thank you, nurse. Thank you so much. That's wonderful oh. news. Dr. Hayes, there's someone waiting for you in the lounge. Oh, um, I'll be right there in a second. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Can you imagine that baby boy? God, Eric's got to be three feet off the ground. Yeah, he's got to be really excited. Uh, I'm sure they called him at home. I wonder if Stephanie's hurt. Mind if I join you? If you want. What are you drinking? Club soda. You're entitled to something a lot stronger. There isn't anything strong enough for what I feel. You shaved? Yes. What brought that on? Just decided to do it. Where? The hospital. Mother, were you with Dad when I called? Yes. And you know about Brooke? Yes, I know about the baby. I was just standing here, actually, wondering why I felt so empty. I certainly knew this day was going to eventually come. I am very sorry. You certainly put up a great battle. Oh, I didn't have a chance. I wouldn't say that. Don't patronize me. You always knew that your father would end up with Brooke. Everyone else in the family did. I was the only one that refused to accept it. It's hard to give up a dream, Mother. I understand that. But now that you have, Believe me, it's not going to get any worse than it is now. Once you've hit the bottom, there's only one way to go. That's a bit simplistic, isn't it, honey? Maybe. But I think it's true. The minute you let go of Dad in this relationship, you started on the road back. You're not going to regret giving Dad his freedom, Mother. And that is as true as any fact can be. The fact is, I didn't give him his freedom. I don't intend to. Eric is still my husband. Then you add fresh basil. Now, this part's very important because basil from a jar might look fresh, it might even smell fresh. But unless you get it from the garden, Okay, let's forget about the basil. As a matter of fact, let's not talk at all. 
We communicate too much. The Bold and the Beautiful. This portion sponsored by Spick and Span Pine. Spick and Span, you're my kind of pine. I'll wrap up your spaghetti and leave it here in case you wake up hungry in the middle of the night. Donna, doesn't this drive you crazy? What? me. I mean, make all these elaborate meals. I don't even touch them. I understand. I don't want to be pressured right now. So if I want to cook or clean or brush your teeth, then that's my business. I'll brush my own teeth. But yeah, that's, that's the idea. I accept that. I haven't been pressuring you in any way, have I? No. No, I appreciate that. So then just work out your problems, Jake. Pretend I'm not here. Don't pay any attention to me. Come on in. What can I do for you, Felicia? It's Jake. Yeah, how is he doing? Margot and I, um, we talked to him. About confronting his father? Yes. How did he take the advice? He went to see his father. Well, that's good. How did he go? His father denied it. All of it. He acted as though he couldn't believe Jake was accusing him of sexual abuse. Oh, no. Where is Jake right now? He's at home. Alone. And he's very withdrawn. H have you talked to him? I tried to but he's pulled away from me permanently this time. He needs to see you, doctor. He needs help. Please, will you please go see him? Yes, I did. I am so proud of you. He is a beautiful baby boy. The most beautiful boy you'll ever lay eyes on. How could he not be with such a beautiful mom? So where is everybody? I'm sure Eric is on his way. What about Ridge and your friend Taylor? Taylor had to go up to her office and um, Ridge, who knows where he is. Stormy, I don't want you to worry about Ridge and me. I'm going to marry Eric, possibly even tonight. Maybe even right now.
What about Margot? Hasn't he spoken with her? Margot's been very sick. Nothing serious, I hope. No, um, a bad case of the flu. Well, then he doesn't really have anyone to talk to. That's why you have to go see him. Please, Dr. Hayes. I can't tell you how worried I am about him. Well, he doesn't have any friends? There's a woman, Donna Logan. She's in love with him. Is she applying pressure? No, just the opposite. But she's not a friend. She's a woman with a mission. She wants him, and I'm sure she'll do whatever it takes to get him. What? There's a problem with this. I know you're not pressuring me, but you are in love with me. Jake. Don't deny it. I wasn't going to deny it. But the fact is, you're working through something right now. And whether you want to admit it or not, you need a friend. Somebody who can take care of your basic needs, Jake, like eating and cleaning, whatever. Because you're not going to do that yourself. You're too wrapped up in whatever it is you're working through. Jake, you do need a friend. So please, just let me be that for you. Just your friend. I'm sorry I wasn't here. You had other things to attend to. Nothing more important than the birth of our baby. Making sure he'll have two married parents? That's pretty important. So, is there a judge or a minister outside in the hall? No. Stephanie wouldn't cooperate. Let's see. But, Brooke, I swear to you, I will not let this divorce drag on forever. I promise you that. Eric, let's not give this moment away to Stephanie, okay? Let's not even think about it right now. Of course. Of course you're right. We have a son, sweetheart. <laughs> a son. Well, where is he? When, when do I get to see him? He'll be here soon. He looks just like you. Yeah? Yeah. Well, he's a lucky boy. That's what I told him when he was on my stomach, just after he was born. I held him before they cut the cord, and he was so peaceful, so secure. Still a part of me, and yet ready to face the world. <sighs> he is going to have such a wonderful life. Oh, you bet he is. You and I are going to make sure of that. But first things first, we have to talk about his name. You're not giving dad the divorce? No. Even though he has a baby now? Who am I supposed to live my life for? Your father or myself? Yourself, of course. Well, that's what I intend to do. I'm not going to let Brooke have it. Ever. You look as depressed as I feel. 
You know how I feel about what you're doing. Yes, I know. You think I should give your father the divorce. I think it's time to move on. Move on? What? God, I hate that phrase. What am I supposed to move on to? Loneliness? Am I supposed to move on to a future without the man that I love and I have lived with for 30 years? Where am I supposed to move on to, Ridge? Mother, you will survive. You will grow. This isn't going to defeat you. Surviving alone is not enough. I'm sorry. I can't believe you're this fatalistic. Oh, it's not a question of being fatalistic. Don't you understand? I intend to fight. That's not being fatalistic. Fight what? What are you going to fight? Brooke? Dad? Their relationship? You can't fight love, Mother, and those two are very definitely in love. That is doubtful. No, it isn't. You shaved your beard at the hospital, didn't you? Yes. And you did it for Brooke, didn't you? Well, you haven't given up the fight then, have you? Don't be silly, Mother. I'm not being silly and don't say I am! Brooke and Dad have a baby now. They're trying to start something, a family, a life together. I have accepted that, and you have to accept that, too. There are a lot of things in this world that I can accept. That is not one of them, and I want you to stop telling me to accept it. I want you to stop expecting me to accept it. I've given my life to my husband. I've given my life 30 years to Eric and to this family, and I'm damn well not going to give it up now. Don't you understand? Don't you understand that it's over now? I'm telling you it's over, Mother. It's not over, and I want you to stop saying that it's over. God! Don't! It is not over. Don't you think that if I could, I would like to feel as strong and happy and, and free as your father feels? I can't. I don't have anyone to go to. Don't you understand? I'm alone. I'm all alone. So it's not over for me, Ridge. Do you understand? It's not over. And until it is, there's not going to be a divorce. So you are telling me that you have named our child without consulting me first? Yes. Hmm. Shall I guess? It shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, Stephen, after your father and your brother. No, it's not Stephen. There's only one name for him, Eric. Would you like to hold your son, Mr. Forrester? Well, you're wrong. He, uh... It looks like his mother. This is your son. 